three, two, one. Welcome to the Jamie Foster Brown Show, and I am your host, Jamie Foster Brown. Now, remember to like and follow us on my YouTube channel and make comments. Stay with us on YouTube for all our upcoming shows. Now, today, we have the funniest man in the world, the funniest <laughs> world of comedy comedian, George Wallace, laughing good for the soul. How are you? <laughs> Laughter is good for the soul. Laughter is healing. Uh, when you stop laughing, you stop living. I'm so proud to be with you today, especially I haven't seen you in the last uh, three, four, five months. You look beautiful. Three, four, five months. I think your memory is messed. It's been 10 years. <laughs> Listen to me. My memory is in the last two years, my memory has invaded me or something like that. I don't think as fast as I used to. I got to get on that privilege and stuff, you know? Yes, <laughs> And my doctor told me there's something else called peroxol or something like that. It sends the blood to the brain, which helps you remember things. I uh, will really? talk about that later. Yeah, because she's really okay. good, uh, good about that. Steve Harvey goes up there, sends all his friends up there. That's Dr. Ronnie. She's up on Martha's Vineyard. She's amazing. So I was Martha's Vineyard, you know how rich you got to be to go to Martha's Vineyard? The black people that go there, they got a show called what? In, in our world or something like that? You got to be rich just to think about going to Martha's Vineyard. I know. She's been there for years and she has this amazing, um, uh, um, she helps people revive some people who are really, really sick. And okay. Dr. Uh, Dr. Ronnie is, has been a miracle. Steve Harvey, well, he, he, everything she does, he sends all his friends, everybody up there. He, he lives for this woman. He, okay. he, he loves her. So I'll give you that information. But First, I want to just talk about you, my, my darling. You were born to Mary and George Wallace Sr. in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Your mother died when he uh, when you were 16, prompting you to move to Ohio, where he found a job with Firestone Tire and Rubber. As part of the company's tuition reimbursement program, you enrolled in the University of Akron, where you studied transportation, marketing, and advertising. Upon graduation, my baby George moved to New York City in pursuit of his childhood dream comedy but success in comedy proved elusive so you george worked as a salesman for an advertising agency to pay the bills okay you followed your dream and so glad to have you here today george i'm just going to jump right in we've known each other for years, yes, years. everything we've done with each other but tell everyone where and when did you get your First big great doing comedy. Well, let me be very honest with you. I haven't had my break in comedy yet. I'm just starting. You're just starting. Looking good too. I am. Thank you so much. I'm just starting and beginning a new uh, day after COVID's been out for uh, two years. I've been on stage in two years, so I'm starting over. And people say um, big break. I, I know I've been blessed. I know I'm the most successful person you've ever met. And when I say that. It doesn't matter. It's not how much money you make. It's how you enjoy your life while you're living. So I am so blessed. I've done everything I wanted to do. I my, achieved my goal. I love to be a stand-up comedian. I wanted to be a comedian since I was six years old and uh, never thought about television or movies. I just wanted to. I heard about Red Fox and people in Las Vegas, and that's all I wanted to do was work the stage in Las Vegas. And I went there. And right now, I perform in Las Vegas more than any African-American and most people in the world. Mm. Well, are, you, are, you, are you performing now? Are you all back up and not, you know, working? I'm not back up yet because I'm still out for COVID. I thought okay, I'd wait a while. Okay. Yeah, I thought I'd wait a while. And maybe at the beginning of the year, I want to go back into Las Vegas and start a new show. Because one thing about me, I'm so blessed. In Las Vegas, I've never worked for the hotels. I work for me. I run okay. the show. I'm the boss. I own the show. I do the marketing, I do the advertising, I do the producing, I do everything. So George Wallace owned the show and produced the show. So I will go back in and do that. Who put you Who put you in? Some people say it was uh, uh, Seinfeld. I said, no, 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 no. George oh. got in himself. You know, that's you. 
got yourself in? Oh, Santo ain't never done a damn thing for me. He's just my best friend. He does his thing and I do my thing. No, I got me into Las Vegas. I'm the one with the marketing skills. I'm the one with the sales force. I'm the one that has my own uh, uh, team to do, to get into Las Vegas to promote the show. So, you know, when you see me on stage and, and, and being there and performing longer than anybody else, that includes Red Fox, Diana Ross, uh, Lena Horne, Sammy Davis Jr., all of those people that I thank God for every night for paving a way for me to get in Las Vegas. I learned from them and I took uh, my thoughts and uh, went into Las Vegas and made that happen. So yeah, I, I did it on my own. Uh, Seinfeld is in TV. I'm the Las Vegas live performer. Be sure to tell him hello for me because I enjoy you and him. Both of you are. He's an idiot. Let's make that perfectly clear. I know that he's an idiot. <laughs> he's an idiot. What's he, but he's, but he's serious. What is he saying about what's going on? Like, you know, even George Floyd and things like that. How do you all talk about those kinds of things? And how do we make things better? Well, well first of all, when the George Floyd thing happened, that's when everything came together with the black and the white and all of these, uh, creating this awareness. Uh, and so he wanted to uh, understand Black Lives Matters. What is it? And I was just telling him, you don't understand. You would never understand. That's the kneeling of the flag and everything. At the, at the Super Bowl, we had nothing to do protesting against the flag, had nothing to do with the flag, as you know. But he wanted to know, and a lot of my friends want to know, Black Lives Matter. What is it? I said, well, you have no idea of being a Jewish guy. You're still white. I have never lived a day in my life that when I see a policeman that I don't cringe, that I don't yes, shrink right. up. You have no idea what it's in the policeman. I can't even explain to people like how we grew up. The mm -hmm. policeman could be, could be going in the opposite direction on the other side of the highway, and they would turn around and come back and, and, and stop you just because you're Black in a nice automobile, you know? Mm -hmm. So they don't know anything about that. And me growing up in Atlanta uh, with uh, segregation, yeah, I went to F.W. Woolworth. I boycotted. I sat yeah. at the bench. I, did, I rode the back of the bus. I went on rode the back of the yeah. bus. So I've been through this, and anybody Black, they just nobody will ever understand what a Black person goes through if we see... A uh, police officer and uh, and the uh, and what not only police officer everything we've gone through from uh, uh, discriminatory practices and go around to the back yeah I've seen signs as black I lived in that era black and colored white fountain so I've done it all so when it comes to uh, Seinfeld and my friends asking me about these things well I've actually lived it I can so, tell them so what when you're doing your stage comedy do you ever get anybody a heckler saying something go get your you know black blah 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 or has that ever happened to you and if it did what, how would you react well mostly when people pay to see george wallace they paid a hundred dollars and more to come see the show so they're pretty much not coming in to heckle me <laughs> and i'm pretty good heck I'm, i can handle a heckler's pretty good but my show is about laughter my audience is about people that love to laugh and love people. I have a great mixed audience. I'm one of the very few people that can go to Las Vegas one night. It might be 60% black. The next night it might be 50% white. But I just try to do comedy in general. We talk about issues and I don't particularly do a PC show because I just talk about everybody and I will never embarrass you. You know, I talk about Stevie Wonder. I go to church with him. I talk about him and uh -huh. and, and simple things. I just love having fun. And if you do it right, people will laugh with you, no matter what. How are you feeling these days after your accident when you tripped on the wires on the stage? Did you sue Bellagio? What was the, the casino? Was it, was it a fair outcome? How did you it, feel? Mm -hmm. It wasn't fair. It was a, but you know, I learned something uh, in mm -hmm. my suit. Here's mm -hmm. something I learned. My jury, make sure you have your peers, the law states that they have your peers okay. on the jury. So I didn't have, uh, I only had one black person on my jury. And I thought uh, a, a, a Spanish lady would understand more, but let me tell you something, mm -hmm. always have, I think the law says there must be one eighth or one third of the uh, jury must be of your peers. I, I need more. That. Yeah, so if you get black people on your side, uh, and you got always got two or three, uh, that's the police, they come get me every day, so. so <laughs> I'm gonna bring you right but back. I, but when you talk about lawsuit, yes, always have people, uh, uh, your peers uh -huh. on your jury, because you can sit there and judge with the attorneys who you want on the jury, and everybody says, okay. So uh -huh. have people of color 
or somebody, uh, a minority with you that understand what you're going through. So the money that I got, people thought it was a lot of people went crazy. They thought all that money going like, I spend that on my advertising budget every year. You don't understand. It's like entertainers, they think entertainers make a lot of money. We do make a lot of money, but at the same time, the government is taking 40% of your money. You have a management taking a, a 10 to 15. You have agent 10 to 15. You have PR people. You got the, so much to, and uh, so you don't make as much money as you think, but the lawsuit, I could live with it. I did live with it and I'm good. I'm back on stage. I'm enjoying life. I'm but you're not at the Bellagio. They didn't let you come come back or anything, did you? Oh, I've been back over there to work. It's just, it was a fair, a, you know, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, but they didn't, they didn't boot by blackball me or anything like that. I worked for the MGM Grand. I worked for everybody in Las Vegas. But, you know, all the, most years I was with uh, Caesars organization at the Caesar. Flamingo. Yes. Let's talk about you and Sybil Wilkes uh, on YouTube show and why I haven't been on it, please. Well, let make the, let's make this perfectly clear. I'm off this week, but next Thursday, if you're not doing anything, I will personally put you on the show. <laughs> okay. How about that? You know, about Thursday, <laughs> Thursday night is George Wallace night. We have now included you in the show with Sybil Wilkes <laughs> and myself, and we'd I, love to have you. And we talk and about I, the issues I, of the I day. love her. I love her too. Guys, guys we're going to take a, a short break and be back with more of my funny friend, my funny Valentine friend, George Wallace. Stay with me. The 3D Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that brings awareness to autism by special events and community events like Stomp the Runway for Autism. We also specialize in health and wellness services, advocacy services, clothing and school supplies, food for families in need. Be a part and make a donation now at www.the3dfoundation.org. We're back with one of my favorite people in life, comedian, George Wallace. George, do you think there's like a race war coming, especially since ex-president Donald Trump left office? I don't know what's happening here, but he certainly calls the, the division of the country, and it's massive, and it's uh, continuing today. And he's still back talking, and, and his followers are adamant about following this idiot nerd you know i have prayed to god for myself i wanted to be the greatest bs in the world but mm -hmm. donald trump just I kicked my ass in the bs department yes. and yes i don't i hope there's no race war but it certainly is uh i think it's going to get better it has to get better uh because most people are good people to be honest even the republicans except i i don't know about the black republicans uh, not all black republicans but <laughs> I know I'm going to get in trouble, but some of my friends are just crazy. Okay. Like Tim Scott. I don't understand Tim Scott. I don't understand the, the, the crazy people, the, the, uh, yeah, the we black got Republican. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the, what's his name down in Georgia running for senator? Uh, Herschel Walker. Mm -hmm. You know, he's running against Warnock. Come on. what, what is, That's a Republican strategy, I think, to have one black man running against another right. so they can steal some of the black folks. But Herschel, you go back to Texas, take your black back to texas and stay there because warnock is our man and we're going to stick with warnock okay let me just ask you about this um the the i'm, I'm from atlanta that's what i'm talking about george i know you know? i know why, why you did why you doing that um so the race war you know donald trump left but you know, I'm, I'm just still scared. I'm still scared about his power. I'm just sorry. I just had to go back there for a minute. Just think about that again. I'm, I'm because I, I had a, I had a dream. I woke up out of a dream years and years and years ago about um, a man who was like the devil, and he had the whole world on fire, and he was very happy about it. It just, it, it, it this thing with Trump. It just reminded me a lot of that dream and it frightened me at that time. I think a lot of people have that dream because I think we're, we're into that phase. And like like you say, there's so many followers and every day we turn on the news, we have the George Floyd situation, right? Yeah. And I told Sybil, I said, you know what? This is the worst thing we had mm -hmm. ever, one of the worst things, but this is just because of the video, because of the camera, it's been happening to us for years. Yes. And, and I said to them, we're talking about this today, the worst thing that ever happened, but you know what? We're going to be talking about it next week and the week after that. And guess what? It's a year and a half later. We're still talking about it. We're having black kids killed by the police officers. They're still, I don't know why I always constantly talk about police brutality because that's just one thing that I just worry about. You know, being a black man to this day and living in Los Angeles and living everywhere, 
I worry about a police officer pulling me over and telling me to get on the ground. Yeah. Why? I just, that just makes me so angry. And I know I'm going to go to jail because why should I get on the ground? You can handcuff me. We see so much injustice. injustice. And go ahead. I mean, it's, it's almost, it, it reminds me of Nazi Germany because I studied Nazi Germany. Sure. And it reminds me of Nazi Germany, the brutality, the, the killing with no regard. It was just like, it's the devil's children who are here. Now they feel like they're more powerful. You know, I look at things, you know, uh, with uh, spiritually. Yes. You know, and I'm like, what is going on? I've, I've, I've read a lot about Nazi Germany and the things that have ha happened and how it escalated. So escalated, when, yes. Right, and so that's what's happened. happening here. And you see what's happening in, even today in Washington, D.C. We see things that are happening right now, even with the January 6th situation. And these people are in jail. I mean, they're not in jail. They're going to jail, but they're only going to jail for six months. And if they go on good time, they're out in three months. And what, if it, had it been Jamie Foster Brown, how many? She, you would have got a minimum of 10 years. Right. And what is that? I don't understand why they don't feel it, that, that you have to stop it. That is the biggest pandemic. This is a pandemic. Demic. Yes, it is. No, not damn it. Damn, damn this thing. <laughs> I'm doing you. I'm oh, yeah. doing it you. is. And it makes you angry when you see these people, you know, because we start from day one, January 6th, 12 noon. We know for a fact, getting out of the car, had we crossed those barriers, oh, no. it would have been all over. You know, and the lady that got shot, you know, I don't particularly feel sorry for her. She's breaking into the government property. I don't know why more people were not shot. If it were all of us, they would have been. So I get very angry when this, when this happens, you know? Yeah. And even everybody went past the barrier should have been locked up. And now they're getting six months and seven months. And you're getting people refused. You have to, uh, what's this, this guy in court today? Won't go to court, being have to be subpoenaed to go to court. Uh, Bannon? Bannon, Steve uh, Bannon, yeah, yeah, guys like that. And they're getting away with things that we would never think about getting. I don't understand uh, it at all, you know, it, um, anyway. But well, we understand that it's a white thing. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. understand that, yeah. Well, you know, they feel like they're losing now because we are the, the majority, we're quickly becoming the majority. They are losing. Yeah, they are losing. What do you think about that? And we are, they're losing because of black women. Let's make that perfectly clear. Black women, okay. you want to win something, you got to put the black women up front. And okay. thank God to people like Stacey Abrams in Atlanta. It, and it's, it's spreading like crazy. Those Texas. are powerful women. Powerful. Come on, come on. The I lady know. with Black Lives Matter, uh, you just got so many powerful women around. There's Jamie Foster Brown speaking their voices. Yes. You want to get something I done, give it to a black lady. I'm still in love with my people. I think we're the most we're the most creative people put on earth. You can't tell me any other society that has so many poets that are able to put infectious beats behind their poetry and conquer the world with it. In China, <laughs> Italy, there it doesn't exist in any other race. Right? Am I right or no? We are doing it in every way. I don't even want to go into the history of the things that we've uh, uh, created invented mm -hmm. just a simple thing like i'll take two things that i just love the red light and air conditioning and i'll just <laughs> <take> <laughs> we did that we, did, we yeah. did the red light just thinking we didn't have red lights in the world today but I, I think man, the radiator also was i think was a woman the radiator is something similar to the air conditioner mr jones uh, just think if we didn't have air conditioning today That's right. oh <laughs> my god you wouldn't be wearing that hat we could talk, I, absolutely. <laughs> oh my God, we could talk forever, but you know, we got no more room. You know, we got black keep people again, yeah. But people of color, we are getting things done, and we got it's going to get better. It's going to get about, better. What about getting vaccinated? What did you think about that? Get your shot. I got both. I'm getting vaccinated now. Listen, <laughs> listen, Jamie, I might be wrong for saying this, and people may hate me for saying this, but. I believe if you don't get your vaccination now, don't go down to the hospital looking for it when you get the disease, okay? okay? So you wait until we take care of these people that are vaccinated that if I there's mean. a breakthrough case like that. So getting vaccinated, you must get vaccinated. You get vaccinated for everything else. Right now- I didn't think about the flu shot and everything. We got my measles, all those things that mm -hmm. we get. And you didn't even think about it. But, think but it. now because, because of the divisiveness, that's what has happened. People are going like, well, I don't have to do this because Trump said don't do it. Trump Let said put some vaccine. Yeah. Trump said, put some Clorox in your vein. And they're following a, you know, misinformation. They're following a dumb yeah. guy, a leader. So, and and they're ready to vote for him again. I know. But you need to get your vaccination. And what's going on in these cities today, they're requiring and making it mandatory. Well, I don't want to work in an environment where you can, uh, 
transmit the disease to me. I don't want it. And I don't want to give it to you either. So I want to be protected. I want everybody around me to be protected. Uh, if you don't want to work in this environment, then you go somewhere else and work. So it's happening to the city workers. It's happening to a lot of companies. So I believe in the vaccination. I got both my, like I said, I got both my shots on the same day. I, you know, the doctor said I couldn't do that. I said, like a hell, I can't. He walked out. I walked into another room. The nurse said, hey, Mr. Wallace, you're here to get another shot. Yeah, hit me on this side right here. What? Oh, no. my but God. That's good. I just got my booster. I just got my booster. I have and, and uh, so I, I'm just happy about it. And I hope you get your booster. We, science, the numbers are there. Look at the numbers. I already got my booster. I just need a boyfriend. So you help me get that, OK? It's been a long time. My husband. Don't push me. Please don't push me. Please don't push me on that that booster and that injection. Please don't. You need a boyfriend. Don't go there. <laughs> What's, wait a minute, let's I got a shot. I got a shot for you. <laughs> What's going on with our young men talking about boyfriends, running around with their pants hanging down, past their butt line? What's going on? I don't even worry about that anymore because you know what? These are young kids and they're doing their thing. You know, I used to talk about it all the time, pants hanging off the ground. I saw a boy in Atlanta, Georgia, 300 pounds with his pants hanging off his ass. I said, boy, pull your pants up. He says, this is as far as I can get him. <laughs> <laughs> well, stop eating so much. <laughs> yeah, but in any case, you know, I, I used to talk about it. It was a great joke, you know, and, uh, uh, but the kids are doing their thing. God bless them. And it seemed like it's, it, it's gotten into the white fashion world now. With the, mm -hmm. Well, they do everything we do. They take all our trends. Three years later, see what's happening. One of the greatest designers in the world now has jeans built in with the underwear on top. It's part of the, part of the pants now. That's a, that's a white guy now who's caught in with the fashions that we've been doing for years. But uh, the kids, do your thing. I may not like it, but don't listen to me. I'll talk about you like a dog, but do your thing. You know, It's just nasty. I don't need to see your pants hanging off your ass. It, it just looks nasty to me. And I'm like, my family members, when they come to my house, I'll say in a minute, pull your pants up, boy. Well, I just really want people to to remember to go to Jenny Foster Brown to our our, um, um, our our all of our outlets, and and I'm just ex I'm excited to have had you here. Thanks about so much. Go to my YouTube channel, my darling. Leave a comment and subscribe to the Jamie Foster Brown Show. I hate to let you go, Mr. Lady Killer, Mr. Batman. Well, listen to me. I just want to be like you. Also, follow me on Twitter. I was voted a top 25 funniest tweeters in the world by Rolling Stone magazine. So follow me on what? Twitter at George <laughs> at Mr. George Wallace. Do that and uh, you'll have some fun. And it's just a lot of fun to do Twitter. I wrote a book called Bull Twit. I'm so involved <laughs> into instead of bull, bull Twit, that's the Twitter world. I talk about been... real, Jimmy, I talk about little things like uh, growing, growing up in Atlanta, we were so poor that my dog could only have one Ray B. Little thing, we were so poor. We never knew about, uh, and son, they were, we could just watch Sanford on TV. That's how poor we were. We never, we knew about Gladys Knight, but we <laughs> never, never knew about the Pips. That's how poor we were. Little things, <laughs> little things in my mind about things, I don't play by the rules. I'll do, uh, you know, I'll eat pancakes from a cup and cupcakes out of a pan. I do stupid because okay. I don't play by the rules. I'll eat French toast in England and an English muffin in France. Right. I'm different. I'll take a refrigerator magnet and put it right on the oven because I'm different. Things go to georgewallace.net, get yourself a book, bull twit. And also my second book, my first book, oh, called yeah. Laugh It Off. Uh, laugh It so Off. You haven't seen me in a long time. I've written two books since I last saw you. I've got to get the books. Okay. The book. I'll right. send you the book. It's called Bull Twit. Go online, georgewallace.net, buy yourself a book. It's all coming to me now, not Amazon, because Amazon takes half your money. I be thinking, okay? I be thinking about things. You gotta like be that. thinking. Thank I be thinking about things like um, I be thinking things like I'm in the grocery store. I saw an item that said evaporated milk, and I'm thinking, well, what the hell is in the can? But <laughs> do that, Jamie. And thank you so much. You your red. That means love. It's important. Love is all you need. Love. Great love for you and my people. And don't forget Bull Twit. Uh, and, uh, and look for George everywhere. And thanks for joining us today. Make sure you join my YouTube and leave a comment and subscribe to the Jamie Foster Brown Show. See you Nashville, next time. I, I hate to cut you off, but Nashville, Tennessee, November 27th, Patty LaBelle, George Wallace, Anthony Hamilton. We're going to oh. be there. Bridgestone Arena. All my favorite people. See you next time. But um, bump. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, Jenny, because my love for you does not require your permission. <laughs> Back at you.